Hello and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland and yet another lockdown so here we go again <laughs> and today I'm going to do a watercolour and as you can see from this it's more the portrait format this time rather than landscape tall and thin rather than long and thin portrait format and this is from a painting this is from a photograph that I took the other night when I was down on the beach with the dogs and Zoom in, Gale. It's some fishermen setting up in the surf down on Drawridge Bay. And you can see why I like the portrait format on that. And a nice moon coming here, which I shall make stand out a little bit more. So, on with the drawing. A quick look at that. And... Horizon lines. People talk about horizon lines. It's really important about rule of thirds. And I've seen people measuring their paper to make sure it's exactly a third or two thirds for the horizon line. It's not that important. The only important thing is that your horizon line isn't bang in the middle of the painting because otherwise you split your picture in half. Slightly above half or slightly below half and that'll do. Fine. You don't need to be that precise about it. So on this one... It's slightly below half. About there. Is that straight, girl? Mm. Level? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, he didn't lie to me. That's all right. Now, on here, it's a very, very simple drawing, this one coming out a diagonal line, slightly diagonal coming down for the sea line as the sea meets the beach. There, and now I'll do the figures. They're very small and there's no colour in them either. They're just going to be silhouetted. And these guys were just setting up ready. There's one. And he's got a tripod there. And this is the only fiddly bit in the entire painting. And that's his rod. Another guy bending down that. Getting his box all set up. And again, there you can see it, look. I've just zoomed in on the photograph so you can see it. And that is more or less that. Do that again. Easy peasy drawing. Now, on with the paint. And as you can see, I'm going to have strong reflections on this. And light coming down from the moon. So, just bear that in mind as I'm, as I'm doing it. And now I've got that in, I've more or less finished with the photograph. Don't stick too rigidly to photographs. You're not trying to recreate a photograph. You're putting your own stamp on that thing. So use the photograph just to get the basic elements in and then get rid of the photograph. Do your own stuff. So what I'm going to do now is slap some sky wash on. For the sky wash, I'm using my big one and a half inch wash brush here. Again, using old brushes, Aquafine brushes, which strictly speaking, are student's quality, and they're fabulous. And as most of you know, I use them for everything, for my acrylics and my watercolours. I'm coming all the way down there as well. And just mop up here. 
and I'm going to have a little bit of raw sienna in the bottom. Bit of that down here. That's a little bit too weak. I'll have some more. Yeah, that's better. There. Now wash out, squeeze out, mop it up again, keeping control of the water at the bottom. And this time, for my sky, I'm going to use cobalt blue. There, cobalt blue. Again, the paints are Aquafine paints. Bit of that coming in here. And I've got a tiny touch of burnt sienna into that I'm picking up. Come down and just into the raw sienna line now. Look. Again, wash out, squeeze out, mop up. Now, here's a little trick. I need a piece of kitchen roll, which I folded up, and now a 10p. And twist that in. Like so. Stick it on there. Now I'm changing to my three quarter inch brush. Again, flat brush. And again, Aquafine. And this is cobalt blue with a touch more burnt sienna into it. There's my cobalt blue look. Touch more burnt sienna. And these are all the Aquafine paints that I've got squeezed out. And we'll come across here. Too many clouds, just a few bits here and there. Now all I need to do wash my brush out, squeeze it out, and suck a little bit of paint out on those clouds. Now all I'm going to do is just let that sky dry. A very, very simple sky. Mop up again here. So easy. Now I've given that about 10 minutes to dry. So we're okay with that. And I've changed my three quarter inch brush again. Three quarter inch flat brush. And again, it's cobalt blue. It's the C next. Cobalt blue. Tiny, tiny touch of hooker's green. bit of that and a tiny touch of burnt sienna. So that's cobalt blue, hooker's green and burnt sienna. And all I'm doing look, with the sharp edge of my three quarter inch brush. Come across here. Nice sharp edge there. And now I'm starting to leave a few bits out. Even bits of the paper shine through. And again, leave a few bits out, especially underneath the moon. Now I'm going to put a little bit more water, no more paint going in there, just more water into the same brush full of paint. So look, again, slightly weaker, it's going further forward. I'm painting through the chappies, because I can still see them. Bit more water.
little bit more there. And a few little dabs in amongst that one. Now, wash my brush out, squeeze out, and just with a clean, damp brush, just come in here. So the majority of my white, well, under colour, bits of paper showing through, are underneath there. And another very simple bit, more water into here, a little bit more cobalt blue into the mix. And come forward here, like so. Notice I've left a little bit of the underpaper showing through in between the sea and what will be the beach there. Now I'm going to drop a little bit of raw sienna into there as well. Just a touch in here. All while that's still wet. Now I'm going to strengthen that raw sienna a little bit more, with a bit less water into it. And that's coming through there. Such a simple painting this, but it's all big brushes up until the very end when I do the, the figures. A bit more water. It's all very yummy. Just keep that paint flowing nice and wet. Slurpy wet. And again, I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes just to dry. Well, more or less dry. Now, it's more or less dried down here now, so I can get my hands on it again. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into the sea to start with and have a few ripples, waves in the sea. So I'm remixing that same mix that I did for the sea, but stronger and darker. Again, cobalt blue, because that's the blue of my sky. Don't change your blues throughout the picture. And a touch more burnt sienna. So that's hooker's green, cobalt blue, burnt sienna. And all I'm doing, look, with, again, with the sharp edge of my brush, is just tap in here and there, underneath where I've left some white bits, look. Well, one of those there as well. Going through one of the figures, look. And again, that little bit of dark highlights even more the white that I've left, or the light that I've left. A few bits over here, don't want too many of these. And here and there, look, I'm just, as you can see now, I'm just using the corner of my three quarter inch brush. So I'm getting an even finer line. Put some of that down here as well. And in this painting, I can't take the mickey out of some of because there's no grass and there's no path in this one at all. Excuse me. Now, I'm going to wash that brush out again. It's 
squeeze it out. And on the top part of the C, just take paint out a little bit here and there to lighten it on the top line. This business about once you've made a mark in watercolours, you can't change it. It's nonsense. Look, I'm washing out and going over. A bit more of that there. And now, in the same way, I want more light on the beach here and there as well. So again, wash out, squeeze out, take out. Look. You see it moving now? Now wash out again, squeeze out again, go back into it again. Look, now you can see it coming out. I just want bits more lights here and there. And again, I'll have some of that here. First I'm softening it, look. You can see it's starting to soften. Now wash out the brush again, go back in. Now take out, look, you see? So it's a simple process. Don't get bogged down with the worries and the difficulties that you're told about watercolours. It's not as difficult as people make out. If you want to change it, go back in and change it. A little bit of that dark there as well. Yeah, that's better. Just with the corner of the brush, look. Now, I just want to darken this little bit a bit more, so I've got a touch of raw umber. There, see? Dark down here. And then going back up, getting it weaker as I'm going further up as the paint runs out of the brush. Wash out again, squeeze out, soften the edges. Now, can I put my hand on that? Yeah, I can. I'm gonna go to my rigger brush which is my small, the only small brush that I carry. And I've got a mixture here, very dark, but again, the cobalt blue look, there, and burnt sienna. Quite a lot of burnt sienna. So it's quite a nice dark mix, that one. Because these figures, I don't want them brightly coloured, I want them more or less silhouetted. And so, you might find it better, old cameraman Gale, or as she's commonly known, the boss, to come around this side of it. I'm going to use my rigger brush. Yeah, I can put my hand on that. Use my rigger brush and just paint in the figures look. There, nice and dark. Draw them down. Now a couple of legs. Here's his fishing rod. And now the tripod. These guys are hardy, you know. When I walk the dogs, it's, it's kind of like freezing cold. And the moon's out. It doesn't bother the dogs because they're splashing around in the sea like it's a summer's day. But these guys stand in the surf for hours on end. There's another chap here. Just dip in again. There. 
Even I'm going quiet for this bit. A little bit of fiddly. Now, some shadow from, from those two. And from him. And also from the tripod. But also, as well as the shadow, we've got reflection. Now, just a few squiggly bits in the sea. A few squiggly bits there. Squiggly bits, that's another technical term for you. You can see where I've put my hand on there, look. Trust me, I will always point out the mistakes. So now, I'm just going to get a little bit of that blue and a little bit of raw umber as well. And have some more texture in there. Ha ha ha! And that, my friends, is more or less that. All that remains now is to take off the tape and you'll see a finished picture. And there we go. Once you've got the tape off, it's, it's lovely to have a nice sharp edge around it because that's when you see a finished picture, really. Um, a very, very simple painting, that one. No messing about with it. All big brushes used. And with the brushes, as most of you know, but for anyone that's just found me on YouTube, I've been found! <laughs> it's only four brushes that I use. Three quarter inch flat, one and a half inch flat, number four round, uh, sorry, number four rigger, and a number eight round, that's a number eight round, which I didn't use in this painting. All Aquafine brushes, these are about three years old, and they get loads of abuse every day of the week. And I also use them for my acrylics. There, I think on my website, which is charlesevansart.com, on my website, they're 19 quid for all four. You can buy them individually as well, but for the whole set, it's only 19 quid. Um, the paints that I'm using, again, Aquafine paints, student quality, that you can see, they've got a good strong pigment in them. Even for student quality, they're using natural pigments as well these days. Dale Rowney, Aquafine paints like Dale Rowney Aquafine brushes. The paper I'm using is the Lantern, the Lantern Rust there. Nice pads. I use a big sheet. I get demonstrators packs of these and I just chop, chop a big sheet in half. But that's about the right size for that one. Um, Lantern Rust, lovely paper and I never ever pre-stretch. Just tape it to the board and crack on with the painting. You might get a little bit of a bulge here and there when you're doing the sky wash because of the amount of water that I'm putting in but when it dries out it's always going to dry out flat so there's no need to worry about it without pre-stretching. There's a couple of nice books in watercolours on my website. This one, everyone's bible to keep in their paint box. Charlie's pocket book for watercolour artists and it's just got so many tips and techniques and it's full of, absolutely full of tips and techniques. And people keep it in the paint box to refer to, to kind of like solve any problems they've got. Another one, uh, the first book I ever did, going on 30 years ago now, I think it must be. Um, and that's a really good book for, for beginners. And if you're into beachy, boaty type sea scenes, you know what I mean. This one, Boats and Harbors in Watercolour, ready to paint, and it's even got the tracings in as well. So you can either use the tracings or don't. But all there, 
all on the website. I hope you've enjoyed that. And now that we've got the lockdown, we should be making quite a few more. Try and keep you busy during the lockdown. Or enthused, at least. Hope you've enjoyed this. See you soon. Bye-bye.